Hello, and welcome to another episode of Getting to Know Nuendo. I'm Lee Riley, and in this episode, I'm going to show you how to uh, create and modify automation in the window. So great. I've got my cup of tea. I've got my new lights. I got my water. So let's go. Here we go. Awesome. So let's take a look. Now, I think the best thing to do is to talk about <sighs> what we can automate, right? So we can automate in graphically and in real time, but there's a lot of different parameters that we can uh, automate. Now, it's probably easier for me to say, what can I not automate? But anyway, uh, right here, I've got you know a video, I've got some stems, I've got some tracks laid out here, and I've also added uh, part of the mix console underneath. Remember, we can actually show hide that by up here, uh, or actually show the mix console here. But anyway, uh, what can we automate? Well, okay, on a track basis, of course, uh, the first thing we can look at is physical mute automation. If I was to open up the channel settings, uh, any parameter on that channel uh, can be automated. Any one of those knobs or buttons can be on, it can be off. Uh, any state, uh, I can, if I'm putting an insert, like a plugin on that particular track, any parameter on that plugin can be uh, automated. Um, any send, any cue send, uh, a channel strip, can be automated as well. Um, anything that I place in here, as well as being in the EQ. Right? And of course, you know, basic stuff like you know, output volume and pan, and as I said, mute earlier. Um, so that can be done um, in this window, but with the, the mix console itself, the same things can be done. If I'm going to show uh, my inspector here and my fader, of course, anything that I have uh, here in the mix console, of course, gets repeated in the uh, the edit window itself, uh, the project window. And uh, except there's a, there's a few things that are just mix console only, which we'll go into in a second. But anyway, those are generally, this is generally whatever you're looking at can be physically automated. Now, how do we do that? So I'm going to look at real time and graphical automation. So right off the bat, I've got this little video here. Let's take a listen to this first. Ooh, a terrible demise. And yes, it's a little shameless plug there. But anyway, um, this is a video I did a while ago and uh, just using this as, as an example, but let's we don't necessarily need the video for this and I can close this window just for an idea. Let's just talk about this read and write business, which is um, real time, right? Up at the top of our screen, uh, we have, we can put things into write. Uh, we can turn off reading automation, which will disable it, right? And you can actually suspend all automation with one single button. Now, if I was, it's weird how that opens that, that up. But anyway, uh, each track itself will have its own read and write. So you can do this track base or globally, right? So the globally is whatever's at the top. Okay. So for example, I'm going to take this first uh, one right here. I'm going to put it into right. Um, so if I was to go in there on a track basis, all I have to do is just do something simple, right? I'm just going to use um, 
some volume automation, right? So I'm just going to play this. I'm going to mute these others for a second. I don't want these playing. Okay. So I'm just going to go in here and start. Okay, moving the fader, right? So once we've moved that fader, we can see uh, real quickly that I've just written some automation. Now, if I wanted to do some pan automation, for example, I'll keep it in right, okay? And I'm just gonna do this. Just move this around a little bit, make a complete mess of it. And you'll notice that automatically it's made another automation lane underneath it. Now, if I'm gonna have lots of automation in this session, then each parameter that I'm modifying or creating, changing, is going to create its own lane. And that's gonna take up a bit of real estate, technically, right? So what we could do is, if you notice right here, at the bottom or at the top of each automation lane, we have an append, right? So what that is, it's adding an automation, like for example, mute underneath it, or I could take it away. I could hide this track easily by just closing that. Now you're saying, well, okay, hold on, my pan automation is just gone, right? But no, visually, it's just gone. Right, so I can easily just look right here by clicking on this little drop-down menu. And that drop-down menu is going to give me a plethora of different things that I can physically automate um, on this lane or this track, should I say, excuse me. And it's still there. The panner information is still there. This is not destructive by any means. So I can always go back and you'll notice that there's a little asterisk right next to it, which means that is active. There's something written on there as opposed to everything else, which does not have anything written so far because I've just started, right? Cool. So I've gone in there and appended and made sure that I'm showing what I need to show. Okay. Now, uh, I just mentioned uh, suspending. Of course, that's suspending all automation in globally, but how do I do that per track? Well, I can technically, there's a little button right here which says mute automation. Now that's not mute automation. <laughs> that's actually mute automation. So if I click on that, you'll see that um, reading is suspended. So when I play that back, everything's grayed out right now. And it's the faders not moving, right? You can see it's reading that back because the read is on the physical track itself, right? So I'm muting that automation. Cool. Right. Um, let's see what is our next thing. Let me look, look at my little cheat sheet here, because there's a lot of stuff to talk about today. Uh, so therefore, I should take some water in. Cool. Right. Let's talk about graphical. Now that we've made a mess of this, um, I'm going to go into read, and there it is. Now, for those of you who are saying, well, hold on a second, that's if I'm going to go in here and change something graphically, um, there's this audio image that's superimposed at the back of it. Now that's easy enough to, to take that off actually, because all I have to do is go to my automation panel, which is we're gonna take a look at this shortly. I'm gonna go to settings, and I'm gonna take show data on tracks off. So you can see that, right? That if you prefer to show uh, the audio behind it, you can do, or you don't need to, right? It might be distracting, it might be, you know, in the way. So I'm gonna, for this, our sake and purposes, so I can show you this stuff a little easier, I'm gonna show you this right here. Cool, so graphically, we have a number of tools. We already talked about this in, 
editing, right? So editing tools. These editing tools can also be used to draw graphically. Now, this is as simple as you can see automatically there's a pencil tool happening. If I hold down Option, uh, I'm on a Mac anyway, uh, Alt on a PC, but you're going to physically make a pencil tool. Well, the thing is, it's, it's doing that anyway, depending on where it is. If I'm using my combined tool. Now, normally, I'm a combined tool kind of guy. I like to use that when I'm editing. But for graphical automation, it's a little clunky, I'd say, because it kind of gets in the way. So what I'm going to do, you can basically do the same thing on both things anyway. Okay. So now I'm going to keep my object selection tool. Now, an object selection tool normally would just select the clip, right? Now I can drag across to select something. And if I hit delete, of course, that's going to delete that automation and keep the two uh, events either side of it. I can undo that. But um, I think it's kind of easier to kind of work that way. If I wanted to pencil something in, I can physically use the pencil, the draw tool or the line tool. Uh, but I, I can use now I can use my option to to click on something and I'm going to make another uh, event. I can drag that event up and down, right? I can erase that event with the erase the little eraser there. I have to zoom in a little bit there and kind of click across it. There we go. And I can undo that easily enough. I'm going to keep that tool back there. Um, but what I want to do here, uh, I can show you the line tool as well while we're at it. I'm going to create a line up here, which is obviously ridiculous. Uh, why I would do that, I don't know. But just goes to show you that your, your line tool is just going to click and drag across something. And, uh, and that's it, pure and simple. If I wanted to move those, I can actually physically move them. Uh, but if you notice that I'm when I'm zooming in, because I have my snap on, it's going to snap to the nearest grid line, right? Two things I can really do here is I have my quick key, you know, my key command to take that on and off, or I could leave it that way and just use what I call the clutch. It's like when you're changing gear in a manual or stick shift, right? In America, um, you would just click in the clutch and that temporarily disengages the snap. That's It works the same thing for moving um, clips as well as doing things in the automation realm. Okay. Right. So we've got the race, we've got line tool, we've got the object selection. Cool. Uh, if I was moving something actually as well, while I'm on the subject of moving, if I'm moving it and I want to get it back to where it was before, I, I keep it clicked in. All I have to do is hit the escape key. That's kind of cool. You've got to be careful you don't do it twice because then your Mac is going to go, boop, you're doing something wrong, right? So I'm moving this and then it's going to snap back if I hit the escape key, right? That's kind of cool, right? Just nice little tips there. Um, okay, so these are basically ramps, right? These are ramp curves. Now, these are straight lines, but what happens... Got to get my lemon tea while it's still hot. Um, what happens if I want to smooth that out a little bit? Okay, so I'm thinking, well, all right. Um, well, we can create Bezier curves, Right in the middle there, you'll see like this little uh, circle that sits right in the middle there. And I can grab hold of that. And if I move it left or right, I'm just creating um, a curve right in the middle. So it smooths everything out, right? So it's, it's creating this without creating another event, which, you know, if you've got a lot of events and a lot of automation, you're also saving on a bit of RAM as well. Uh, so that nicely smooths everything out without, you know, creating another event. Bezier curves are pretty cool. 
Um, now, right, what I'm going to do here is get to my next section. And hopefully we're doing good so far. Excellent. So what I want to do is, uh, as I said earlier, I can just, if I'm selecting something typically in Nuendo, um, highlighting, selecting, whatever you want to say, and that's going to be a certain color, which is a preference. Um, of course, I can change my automation that way, but I could also do it this way with um, this object selection tool. Now, if you closely look at this, it's also selected. And of course, I can move that, right? Just this whole block by selecting that. You can do that because it turns into a little hand, right? And then you can move that. But if the eagle-eyed viewers out there have noticed that there is there are a few little marks around everywhere. Now, the top left-hand mark is going to tilt the automation. In other words, it's going to use the other part as an anchor. So I'm going to pull that down, and it's anchoring off the furthest most right. Now, if I wanted to compress that data and not make it as open a volume curve, I'm going to actually go in and I'm going to hold down Option on this Mac, and I'm going to, it compresses the data. In other words, it's starting to move it to the center point, right? And lever it that way. Same thing goes with the right. I can tilt it. It tilts and anchors and hinges, if you will, off the left-hand side. If I hold down Option, I'm going to compress that from there. This little one right here is going to scale around absolute center. And if you're not quite sure, you can just see what I'm doing right now. Right? I'm going in there, and I'm using my tooltips to see that. And this is going to scale around the center. Holding down Option there will give me another option as well. Uh, which is relative center, okay? Um, now, let's say I wanted to take this. I can do this in real time or graphically. I can trim this and change this section uh, relatively. I can grab this as a kind of a group and change it relatively. By that one at the top, which is scaling. Now, scaling vertically will take that and relatively shift uh, my volume fader at this point. Right? I'm not affecting anything else. I'm just affecting volume at the moment. And that is graphically changing that. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's say I wanted to um, select everything on that track there, all the automation on that particular track. I can right-click it. I can select all events. So let's say I just wanted to delete that, or I wanted to just select them and move the entire thing, right? So speaking of moving the entire thing, I can do that um, and grab that whole thing like I just said. And it starts to create something, it starts to create another point and fill in the gaps before it. Okay, I could do that. Why I would really want to kind of move things like that, I don't know. But you have the choice to. Now, let's say that wouldn't it be great if we had the option to, if I moved the clip, that I'd move the automation with it. Well, right here at the top, there's a little button which allows you to physically automation follows edit events. So if I moved that clip, the automation is going to go with it. Why not? I think that should be on at all times, right? Really, there might be a situation where you're not going to use that. But physically, I think this is what you would do. Cool. Right. Time to get my skates on. So uh, we've gone graphically. The eagle-eyed viewers, again, are going to say, well, hold on a second. 
what are those gaps? Those gaps here, uh, we have the option of filling those gaps in different ways, or we can, like just an, an, a typical another DAW would have, uh, they would automatically fill that in by drawing that in, right? This area is called virgin territory, right? Virgin territory, I think, is a cool thing because when my uh, cursor it starts playing across that, I mean, it doesn't need to have things written across it technically, right? And it goes to the next point when it gets there. Uh, so to do that, that is uh, also in a setting, which is use virgin territory. Now, I can keep that on because I kind of like that. I can kind of grab and select a section and move it without having to worry about, oh, man, am I moving the right thing or not? So I would kind I like to use that myself. Uh, but you've got the option to fill this in Um in real time as well. Okay, so speaking of real time, let's get there right now. Um, one more thing I want to talk about here. Uh, this last point, okay, do you want to tell Nuendo this is the last point on that track? You can do that. So as I selected that, you can see right at the top in my info line that it's telling me a lot of info, right? It's telling me at what position that is. It's 17 seconds and six frames, whatever, or 17.06 seconds um, in there. And it's volume. It's on the volume. Uh, it is the value is 3.31. I'm presuming that is now decibels at this point, right? Which is obviously not going to play that there because there's nothing there. Anyway, but the point I'm making here is I can tell it, do I want it to be a terminator or not? If it's not, that means it's going to leave that open so that it keeps writing that value and I'm ready to change it somewhere down the line. If it is the termination point, that's it. So a little Arnold in our lives. There we go. Terminator. Excellent. Cool. So that's kind of graphical in a nutshell. Give myself a little break here. Talk amongst yourselves. How's everyone doing? Excellent. Right. This is the one that's going to take a lot of breath. Right. Automation panel. So if you've got a control surface, this is your thing. If real-time writing is your thing, why not? Especially if you, like, for example, using Nuage or something like that, and this is completely integrated, um, I'm going to bring up the automation panel. I've showed you a little bit of it so far, but what this is doing is keeping everything in one place. Right. First thing I'm going to do is before I start looking at the modes uh, and all these different tabs is this little drop down menu. This little drop down menu is telling me I can choose a lot of different information here. I can delete all automation. I can just say, hey, I've been working on this all night and I made a big mess of it. Right. I just want to start from the beginning. <laughs> so. You know, it could happen. You could do a save as just to be safe, but there's another way of doing it as well. Uh, I can just delete all automation in the project. Um, this is not destructive at this point. I can delete that so you can see that that went. I can delete automation of selected tracks. Now, deleting automation for selected tracks, you saw it disappear, but did that, di did that delete... The, mute or the, the panning automation that I had underneath it. No, it didn't, because that was what was on top. Okay? The pan automation is still there. Um, if I wanted all automation on that track to be deleted, I'm going to select that track, which is the, the parent track, right, of that lane. 
if that makes sense. So um, delete automation of selected tracks. Now, delete automation within range, right? Uh, that is when it's arranged this way with this tool, actually. Okay. Oh, I, I, da, 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 da. okay, cool. What am I doing? It's arranged. It needs to be arranged this way. Yay, there we go. So it's a, a range. Still, after all these years, I still get caught up on that, right? It's a range of a selection. <laughs> so there it is. So whatever is in there, I can just delete whatever's within the range. Great. Let's take get rid of that. Now, here's the really, really cool part. Um, for those of you, I just mentioned virgin territory as opposed to having gaps. If you wanted to fill those gaps in, you basically just cl click on fill gaps on selected track, okay? Or fill to current value. So that depends where my cursor is, right? Where my cursor is there, I'm thinking, hey, I like that. You know, I'm playing this back. I like that level for this track. So I'm going to uh, fill gaps with current value. That's really cool, I must admit. All right, so uh, you've determined what level you want, and now it's going to fill in those gaps there. Okay, sweet. Now, uh, a little sip of tea. Got to keep hydrated. Yeah, okay. Um, so for those of you consoles, whatever, you're doing all this good stuff, um, you may want to start off with something. You've rough mixed stuff. You've got it to a point where as you're like, okay, uh, great. I've got a kind of a rough mix where I need it to be. Then you need to make a static pass, right? You basically need to snapshot whatever you've done because you, you don't want to make a mistake, you're cool with it, but you're going to tweak it. Creating initial parameter events is for uh, mix console uh, type uh, events inside of Nuendo. And I do that, and now you've just seen that uh, a volume has now been adjusted on these two tracks. Okay? So that's kind of like doing a static pass on your, pro, your your mix console itself, which is this window, right? Okay. Let me double check that I've got this stuff here for later. Cool. While I'm there. Uh, right. Now, let's say uh, this is the true way of physically making a static pass and then saving it as a file. It's a global snapshot to this particular session. If I hit save right now, because apply and remove is not available, I'm going to hit save. I'm cool with that. That's what I want to do. If I want to do some more tweaks and save it again, um, what I'm doing is here, now you can see that I can apply, I can remove. If I want to update that, all I have to do is hit save. It's saved now, updates that saved file. If I'm doing something different, I want to come back to my saved file, I'm going to hit apply. If I don't want that, I'm going to hit remove. Right. On a busy session, if I'm working away and I'm putting all these little uh, events in and I want to kind of reduce them, uh, there's a reduction uh, setting right here, reduction level. Um, there is also um, spikes. So when you have these little spikes, when you're trying to join some stuff together, and there's a big, there's a large spike that happens, and you, your volume fader jumps up. You can either delete that, but if there's a lot of them in there, you can delete uh, automation spikes of selected tracks only, or your entire session. Cool, awesome, and thank you, Lemonesque, for that. Like, subscribe. And still watching. I like that. Sweet. Knows we're doing something right. Getting you the information. 
Okay. A lot more. Here we go. Uh, we can also, this is a mirror of write automation. Uh, append everything else right here. Uh, sorry, suspend. Uh, that is global. Okay. Uh, let's talk about the modes. Right. Yes, right. Touch. Here we go. So touch, the best way to describe that, um, it's uh, an update kind of mode, right? It re so what you do is it's like reading. It chills and sits there and says, okay, I'm going to read the, inf the automation back until you touch that parameter. Right. So in this case, let's fill in the gap between. I'm going to put it in right. Remember, there it is. It's mirrored that straight at the top. I'm in touch. I'm going to move this fader, right? So pressing play. Let go of it. Okay. So now when I let go of it, it is going to reset back to the null, right? To what it was like before I touched that. Okay, that time itself is in the settings. It's called return time. So I can go in there and make sure that I've got the right return time set. Is it too fast? Does it glide back nicely? There you go. So that's touch. That works with various things, right? Auto latch, I think the best way of describing that is I'm going to go to this next piece here. I'm going to go to my little music track here, if you if you allow me. And I'm going to uh, open up this guy right here. Uh, let's move this out of the way a little bit. And I'm going to grab that and then do a little filter slope here. So when I play this back, this track, go. I'm going to go back to this briefly. Uh, let's go back to here. Right, it's playing, right? But okay, I want to do like a little effect like that, right? So I'm that's what I'm going to do. So I was in I wasn't even in write or read. So I didn't have to worry about a thing there. But I'm going to put it in right, and then I'm going to uh, go in here. Let's go ahead, and it works better for plugins, I think, and, and EQs because once you, what latch does, it sits there and reads until you touch uh, while in right. And then it latches itself and stays at that position. So for this, it's perfect. If I was in touch right now and I started that filter sweep and I'm moving that filter sweep, what is it going to do when I let go? It's going to go back to what it was before. Right? So to kind of prove that point, let's do that together, right? If I'm in touch... There it is, it's writing it. And then, oops. Uh-oh. So it's that's not really the, the right mode that I really want to use for this. Okay, so I'm going to uh, delete automation on that track. Remember we did this. Delete automation on selected tracks and start again. All right, I'm going to go in here. And floating windows. Fun times. I'm going to go into auto latch. Try that again. Let go of it. And it came back. It must have. Yeah. I didn't delete what I needed to delete, right? That's really what it is. There's a lot of stuff I didn't delete on there. Right. <laughs> 
Go in there and then de- go in there and then delete all of that. It shocked me there a little bit. Okay, so if I go in here, we don't see any asterisks. It's got to happen. Something's got to happen live, right? So there we go. <laughs> shocked me there a little bit. Cool. It just means I'm human. Right. Auto latch. There we go. Um, I'm going to rewind that back later and t- take a look at my face when that happened. And it's doing it again. Okay. Right. There's something going on <laughs> that I'm not paying attention to here, but it shouldn't do that. Right. I think it's because it had it actually had a, a point in there. Anyway, that's what happens if you're going to try something live and it doesn't work, right? Anyway, so I could have done that with a pencil tool and taken that parameter and drawn that in nice and tidy, but whatever. It's the I don't think it is the version. That's a good question, Bob Maple. Um, isn't that the Virgin Territory thing? Uh, let's try that together. I'm definitely... <laughs> I'm definitely wading into big waters here. This shouldn't have done it, but that could be a great point. Let's try it. Um, I don't know why it's doing that. I'm taking version territory off. I think what happens was that's a good point. Oh, it just got here. But no, that's could be it. Could be it. That's probably what it is. It's probably going back to that uh, previous break point, uh, which is now not there. Right. Okay. Let's try this. Let's cross fingers. And then I'll give up. Now you see, there it is. Okay, cool. Ah, it's full, full beans. Ah, I know what's happening. I know what's happening. Because that's my static area. I started on that. When I hit play, it basically, it took that value as the start, right? Let's try it again. Yeah. I'm gonna have to do some, a little bit of diddling here and start deleting breakpoints. I mean, I could just do that, right? But then we're going to go back to where we were before. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Right. That's what it is. Thank you. Take read. Well, you can take read off and then it won't read back. That's a good question as well. Uh, Happens if you take the read off. If I take the read off, it's not really going to... uh, read that automation back, right? So I think that's what it was. It was a virgin territory thing. But what I was doing is trying to do a filter a different way. Um, It makes sense now. I should have started up there and then deleted that breakpoint for it to properly work. I just chose something randomly and it backfired a little bit there. But we're good, right? Cool. Anyway, let's take that out. And let's talk about um, crossover. Now, crossover is going to be a little bit of both, right? It's going to act like touch at the beginning and then end like latch, which is wanting a punch out. Um, When it crosses the original threshold of where you were before, uh, it's going to go in to latch and it will stop and punch out. Um, One thing I didn't show you before is when I did do this, let me go back and read it. I need to touch this, right? Punch out is lit. So now I punched out there, right? I was writing some volume automation Um, now what happened is punch out light came on, hit punch out. And that's the same thing as me stopping. 
what if what happens if I didn't want to stop play? I wanted to keep listening. So punch out will actually punch out of latch. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, yeah. It's vital information, right? It is vital information, and that's why we're here. Uh, okay, Trim. Let's go back, and let's get away from that music track. It must be jinxing me or something, I guess. So we'll talk about music uh, next episode. <laughs> let's leave it be. Hey, oh, well, you know, it's got to happen, right? So, um trim now remember when i selected something earlier and uh, i went in there and i grabbed uh, the scale vertically and i said that's equivalent to trim well i don't need to select it i can do this in real time right i can trim uh, and it works with other modes so let's say i want to trim touch my cursor's right here. Um, now, this volume is showing right here. If I'm in trim, all of a sudden, now it's not even doing that now. <laughs> oh, okay. It's not trimming now because I'm not in right. <laughs> Okay. Fun times. Walking on the edge. Love it. Uh, I'm in trim, right? Soon as I kick in trim, it's changing from volume in decibels to zero. <laughs> it is a tightrope. Thank you. <laughs> and I'm willing to do it. Anyway. Right, so there's trim. Notice that this is a delta value now. It starts at zero. So now this is going to move relatively, right? It's going to take the same curve, but relatively move that down. So that's trim. Okay. Let me go through this pretty quick because I've taken quite a bit of time. I'm at 45 minutes, and I'll just run through this now. Um, fill. Now we can do this real time. Let me get out of trim. Uh, let me do this. Uh, fill to punch. Start, end, loop, and gaps. Right, so what this will do, uh, fill to punch in point. So uh, I could start recording, right, to punch. And what that's going to do is it's going to fill back to my punching point. Whatever that, that value was, it's going to go back and flatline to that punching point. Now, if I was doing this to start, uh, it's also, this works actually with touch better. Um, what I'm going to do is start here. If I'm in to start... Let go of that. See how straight away it filled into the beginning. Now, guess what? To the end, um, I can click on that, and it does the opposite. So I'm going to go in here and fill that to the end. Now I've completely written, minus the virgin territory, it still has virgin territory right here, but it is now written to the end because I said, Right to the end, please. Okay. Here is something cool. I really, really like it. Let's say I don't want to disturb anything here. I'm afraid of disturbing that with touch or latch or whatever uh, and overwriting it. So what I would like to do is select an area in time and let me just say, hey, I want to just affect this. So I'm going to put it in loop and cycle it so now I've got um, um, a locator at the beginning and a locator at the end and I'm going to click it and loop I'm going to press play 
And whatever I stop at is now written into um, that level. Absolute time save. Right. Exactly. Um, cool. And gaps. Right now, I'm going to take it out of cycle. Uh, if it's in gaps, this is something really, really cool because these two gaps here, I can write information on both of them instantly. Now, what information is that going to be? Well, that information is going to be, as soon as I let go of that, it's going to take that value and apply it to those gaps. Are you watching? Here we go. There we go. I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to let go of it. Boom. That level that I liked when I let go of it, because that's what touch does, right? It writes those values in there. Now, um, that is kind of the equivalent of this, right? Fill gaps and selected tracks. The only difference is now with it being real time, I can actually hear it while I'm doing it. That's the advantage of that. Okay. Preview. I'm going to do this real quick. Preview itself is like a temporary clutch because this is, um, you can use it in conjunction with everything else. What this will do is um, it kind of acts like read. Okay. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to preview it and I'm going to preview it and you'll see that little P that pops up, which shows them in preview. I'm not writing anything right now, but when I get to that point, um, I'm going to let go of it. And then it writes that to whatever I'm working with here. Or I can punch it. Uh, on that point, I can punch in now. Or I can auto uh, punch on play. So I can punch wherever I say manually, or you punch on play right from where I start. Okay. Uh, auto punch is for when I'm doing my selection again. When I auto punch, it needs a selection. And now it's going to, you can see it right there. When I hit auto punch, it's going to preview, preview auto punch is going to preview without writing at the beginning, the set locator at the beginning, and then it's going to write the value when it gets to the end of my selection. Whatever that value is at the end is going to be written. Cool. Join. Uh, if I, by the way, if I'm double clicking, what I'm what I'm showing you here is something called one shot versus continuous. I'm gonna have to have some water. One second. Yeah. <sighs> Hello, hello. If I double click, that means I'm locking it. And now this is continuous. Anything I do can double click or twice click it, single click it. Single click it is uh, a one shot. So once I've done that pass, it reverts back to normal. If I double click it, it's going to stay on and, and lock. Excellent. Join is for latch only. Let's say you've been interrupted. Your session's been interrupted, something. You have to take a phone call, whatever it is, and you stopped writing information and you want to rejoin where you left off. Well, that's going to happen uh, in latch. And um, I'm now writing. There it is. I can join now manually, or I can also join where my last dropout position was. If I click on that, that value right underneath it is the value 16 seconds, basically, into this session. Uh, it's going to auto join when it gets to that point. Cool. Real quick. Suspending, we already talked about suspending globally, but now I can suspend uh, my read on volume. 
or pen or anything I choose out of these. Suspend writing individually, right? So that's globally, but it's that parameter. Showing that, if I click on that, it's going to show me all of the, the volume parameters. And if I show used and used only, I can do that because I'm a masochist, I guess. Used only, show used. Uh, yeah. And now I'm going to go back and I've made a big mess of everything. Right. So, <laughs> because it's live. Of course it is. Real quick, we're going to talk about the passes on my cheat sheet here. This is the undo queue. This goes back, right? You will notice that there's these branches in my settings. Um, I can use those undo branches or not. It's where we split off on a particular tangent. You can remove those. Uh, this is kind of cool, like an undo queue just for automation. My settings, we've pretty much covered all of that stuff individually anyway. All right. So now one more thing I just want to talk about. I've got a bit of time. I'm going a little bit over, but I'm sure we're all good, right? I just want to show you some automation uh, with um, a Nuendo plugin. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to, uh, let's see if I can find it here. I'm going to collapse everything. Uh, hide all. There we go. That's it. Cool. I'm going to go back to my visibility and I'm going to show my Foley and my verbs. I don't need this automation panel. Right. Let's say you're mixing Foley. Uh, let's say you're playing back something and that's the wrong video. So here we go. Uh, where is my marker track? Where did you go? Marker? Uh, is it over here? Is it up here? My marker track disappeared. Oh, well, I'm going to manually find it. The scene. Verbs. There it is. It decided to go down there. Cool. I'm going to drag this up here. Thank you for your patience. There we go. Here's a scene. Whereas we have outside. Now, right currently right now, there is no automation on this. I'm going to get rid of that. And I'm going to introduce this guy. I'm going to switch this on. Currently, if I switch it off or bypass it, we're not going to have any um, any verb whatsoever. Oh, these are all muted. Sorry. Okay. Foley on its own always sounds great, right? Now, um, basically, what I'm going to do is say, right, I am going to um, add this reverb and I want it to automate. Now, yes, we can automate the verb itself and all the parameters. We know that. We can automate pre-delay, the size, everything else, and those are just parameters. But on this particular plugin itself, this convolution reverb, we have... Uh, these 36 storable, um, these are, what's the word I'm looking for? These are basically, these are, can be automated as well. These are presets, right? These are 36 storable presets you can have in your session and it can switch from one to the other, right? So like, it's, yeah, these are IRs, Typically, you can actually use your own IRs as well, but these are going from preset to preset. So in a Foley session, you would like an outside scene. Right after that, we're going to the office, 
And right after that, we're going somewhere else, could be in a car or whatever it may be. So if I've set all of these previously, I can get this plugin to change controller data. This is very similar to controller data, right? Or presets on a synth or whatever it may be. Just the same principle. I'm going to actually click on three. I want to uh, browse um, for a setting. And I'm going to look. Uh, let me see. I did this earlier, so I'm hoping it's, it's there. Okay, I'm learning how to spell. Right, and there's my outside preset. My outside preset has already got, I can take some size information out of it, right? I can set this up and I'm going to store this. Okay, I'm going to store that as my outside. I'm going to update it, I'm going to overwrite it. Right, that's my number three preset. My number four preset is I'm going to go to an office, okay, and I'm going to set that office with these already set up, right? And what it's going to do is snapshot. This is very similar to snapshot automation. That's what I was trying to remember. Okay, there's another plugin that does that out there, uh, but this is also the same kind of thing. I'm going to look over here. I'm going to get this out of the way a bit, right? And I'm going to go back to three. And I'm going to, uh, where is my Foley verb? I'm going to put that in right. There it is. Okay. And at that point, I'm going to click on outside. Okay, they're talking outside, and I'm just doing this roughly, right? When it gets to that point, I'm going to shift. That's a lot of reverb. <laughs> anyway, but there we go. Uh, what that's doing is you can see the presets right here, and I can go in and physically view these presets, all 36 of them, and go in and program all of those and graphically change them and use the pencil tool and use trim, in other words, to cycle through those and set my entire Foley session to play back those individual presets. That's kind of cool, right? Absolutely. So on that note, um, I think we've reached our end. We've taken an hour today, but that's all good. Yep. Any IRs you can put in there. That's correct. Yeah. Lemon S Studio. Uh, you can actually load your own IRs up there. So I think we've covered more or less everything you need to know in automation, right? Uh, yeah. Cool. So what I'm going to do here is say thank you for watching today. Hope you like my lights. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. And um, yeah, next time I think I'm going to be talking about some music. Finally. Excellent. So have a great day or night or morning whenever you get to watch this. And take care for now.